Wander Wealthy Podcast, episode 98. Hello, my friends. Oh my gosh, can you believe that it is episode 98? We're so close to 100. I can't even believe it. If you're new, hello, my name is Tess Wicks, and I'm the host of the Wander Wealthy Podcast. This is a show to help women become more empowered get more clarity, and feel confident about their finances. Today, we're going to talk about the brain. And by the way, if you're new, I do a solo show every once in a while. I'm going to be picking these up a little bit more often over the next few months at least. And it's just fun. I'm starting to explore more ideas, more approaches to money and the people that I'm working with. And so... I just want to kind of share these findings and share with you all. In this solo show, we're talking about the brain and this idea that we're all bad with money and how to stop being bad with money. The reason why I want to talk about this is I've been doing a lot of research to develop a master class or a mini course, not sure what I'm going to call it per se, but it'll be a multiple class thing around spending mindset and how to operate in a better system, what I call the guilt-free spending system. I'm super jazzed about it, but I'm still working out the details, so there's a lot more to come on that in the future, so stay tuned. I've mentioned this a few times here and there on Instagram and in my Facebook community and perhaps here on the show, but another thing that I'm working through is starting to make some shifts in my business, in the content I create, the platforms I share my free content on, and the offerings I have in order for you all to work with me. So just keep in mind that things are shifting a little bit. I'm working with a business coach who's really helping me find my zone of genius and be able to serve you all better in ways that are going to make huge, massive impacts on the people that I find are most attracted to my content and working with me. And the podcast as a platform has always been a place that I love to share my message and content, along with the stories and messages of others, of course, and the interviews. And it's really a platform where I find my most dedicated community members and some of my best coaching clients from. So it's not going anywhere. Don't worry. Nothing to fear around that. And by the way, if you want to get into the community, because we do have a community around Wander Wealthy, it's called the Wealthy Wanderers. You can go to wanderwealthy.com slash FB. I will also link it in the description of this episode as well as in the show notes. But if you go there, you can join in on the email list, but you can also get into the Facebook community. And it's a place where I go live usually on a weekly basis and talk about something that I've been thinking a lot about in terms of money, personal development, mindset, that kind of stuff. And if you're really looking for a place to have people that kind of understand what you're going through and are willing to talk about it because the money conversation can be so taboo, then you got to come to the Wealthy Wanderers. So wanderwealthy.com slash FB. Also, as I had mentioned, I find a lot of my best coaching clients from the podcast. So speaking of coaching, (laughs) I wanted to talk to you guys about my money coaching for a quick second. If you're ready to make some smart and productive steps towards a better financial future, working with me will help you get there. My clients come from all over the United States. They have different careers, different relationship statuses, and they love to spend their money in different ways. But there are some common threads that I find between them, and these are the things that they do tend to have in common. For one, they feel overwhelmed, and there's so many financial goals that they want to achieve, but the cost of those goals, the goals themselves, and the reality of what their income will allow them to do, at least what they believe is achievable, that feels super overwhelming. At least if they're staying on the path that they're currently on, which might be spending, might be accumulating debt, might be dealing with some other things as well. They know that they're making a good living, enough to support their basic needs and necessities in life, and yet they still don't feel secure when they think about their money, having a safety net, having some money in investments, paying off debt if they do have debt. They just feel like that part of their life is a little bit out of their control. And they also feel like they don't have control over their spending, or at least that they could be doing 
much better. But they also don't want to restrict themselves and, you know, live like a pauper because they're making good money. They should be able to spend money. That's like the point of getting a job, isn't it? <laughs> and they might be holding on to some consumer debt, things that they've put on their credit card and they're just holding on to that and not paying it off because they feel paralyzed by the fear of draining any savings that they might have in order to pay it off just for another emergency to come along and then not having any savings and having to pile the debt back on. If they have credit card debt, they might feel a little bit ashamed that they have it and that they know they probably shouldn't and they don't even have to have it, but they also don't really know what to do, like where to go from here. Should I pay the debt off? Should I save? What are my options? And then again, getting paralyzed by thinking about all that. They know that they could use a confidant who understands their situation and doesn't think that their desire to get their hair colored or get their nails done every six weeks is ridiculous and frivolous, like probably all of our parents' financial planners or even financial planners that are our parents' age think. They want this confident to also link arms with them, help them make big decisions with their money that they were maybe too afraid to make alone, and especially when their friends or their boyfriend or girlfriend isn't interested or informed with this money stuff. They don't really feel like they have anyone to talk to about, should I put my money in my Roth IRA or just put it all in my 401k? Or should I pay down this debt? I don't even really want to talk to people about my debt. Who can't I talk to? It's me. It's me. <laughs> they want to be doing more with their money. They want to have something in place so they don't have to be constantly worried about what they'll do if the income shuts off so they can get out of maybe a shitty work or living situation before it reaches its breaking point and so they can tackle their other goals, contribute on a monthly basis to their wealth building nest egg. They know that they want to be investing, they want to see their wealth grow, and they know that they can make some passive income and wealth generating opportunities by investing, but they're so focused on also making sure that they can just live without fear and making decisions out of fear. And also it'd be a nice bonus if they could spend without having guilt attached to every what they might deem as frivolous expense. At the end of the day, they want to be good with money and they want a simple system that they can implement and start seeing instant results and feel confident and empowered about their money decisions. So if you feel this, if this resonates with you, I want to talk to you. When we talk, when we work together, we'll talk about money and how no one is truly bad with money. Everyone has the capabilities to be good with money. The truth is we've just been operating in a bad system. And honestly, that's not your fault that you're in this system because no one has taught us about how the money system works. Not in school, not in college, not even in the workplace. And there's also the fact that we're getting bombarded at every angle to make money decisions that will make our lives harder. There's a lack of education in our country and in most others, to be quite honest. There's a normalcy when it comes to taking on debt and living beyond our means. And there's a lot a lot of advertising dollars that are fueling a system that is meant to put things in our path, question our priorities, and drain our bank accounts. When we work together, when you and I work together, we hit the reset button and build a system that works for you. Sure, you might have to do a spending freeze so you can jump off that hamster wheel for a while. You might have to cut out some things temporarily while we shift priorities and get ahead of this rat race. And if I'm being honest, it's not going to be easy. But you don't have to do it alone. And although it's not easy, it is simple. The money system we're working in right now, it's complex. It doesn't make any sense. And it actually doesn't help us in just the way that we behave naturally. My system that I'm gonna help you implement is simple. And it matches our actual human behaviors, how we operate all the way back to our ancestors. And when you implement the system, you can almost immediately feel the effects of getting clarity and control over your money. I just got a message yesterday from one of my clients. We had a coaching call, our very first coaching call the day before. And on that call, we were joking at the end about how she doesn't sleep because she's always kind of worried about the money piece, about her finances. And we were joking about the fact that that would be our greatest achievement after working together is if I can just get her to sleep. And guess what? 
after our first call, so two days ago was our first call, yesterday she texted me and said, I slept. You did it. (laughs) You were worth every penny. And that is so wonderful. It makes me so happy to hear. After the first session with my other client, we were able to reposition her savings so that they linked up with her top priorities personally to her. She was coming to me from a place where she really felt like she didn't have enough, but we were able to work together to show that she does in fact have enough. When it comes to her safety net, she's on a really good path, but she didn't feel that she had no purpose behind her savings. And now we actually get to focus on the next big goal already after just one call. We've basically achieved one of her goals she set with me in the discovery session and we're moving on to the next. My other past clients have paid off thousands of dollars of debt. They've saved thousands, tens of thousands through refinancing and starting investing before they really felt ready. And that's because we were able to make these bigger money decisions that they were too afraid to make themselves before. Other clients, well, we've increased their net worth by $5,000 up to five figures worth after just working together for six months. And it's all because we switched the system that they are living and operating in and that you are likely living and operating in today. And with that small tweak, they have the confidence that they are good with money and they can manage it on their own. And they know when, why, and how to seek assistance for the times that they don't want to make a decision all by themselves. So with that, I just want to invite you to work with me in a one-on-one setting if that resonates, if that feels like, yes, that is what I'm looking for. I offer free 30-minute discovery sessions where we dig into some of your biggest goals and challenges and what you have tried in the past and what you could be doing better. And you can apply for a discovery session and ultimately money coaching by going to wanderwealthy.com slash apply. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, things are starting to tweak in my business from the way I'm working with others. So in order to get in now and work with me for a three or a six month period, you want to apply now. You want to get in before I start making some big changes. And I'll tell you about those changes when we do get on a call to give you the opportunity to work with me in maybe the new way or the old form. But this is really, you know, one of the last times that I'm offering a longer term coaching package. So go to wanderwealthy.com slash apply, fill out the quick application form. You can set up your discovery call there at a time that works really good for you. And then we'll get to chatting. It's completely free, no strings attached. Of course, we will talk about money coaching and see if it's a good fit for you. And now I just want to share this idea about how you can stop being bad with money. This is a phrase that I hear far too often. And I really hate hearing this phrase because it is so untrue. Nobody is bad with money. Nobody. We all can believe that we're good with money. The problem is we haven't. We've programmed our minds to believe that we're bad and thus we act in a bad way when it comes to money. But honestly, at the root of it, you know, in our brains, we can be good with money and we mostly are good with money. We're just operating in a system that is bad. So obviously there's the system, the system I use that helps you become better with money. But not only that, there also is the mindset aspect of being bad, bad, (laughs) that's my accent coming in, of being bad with money And there's actually brain chemistry going on that is making you believe that you are in fact bad with money because you're telling yourself that. I've been doing some studies around the brain. It's something I'm becoming way, way, probably way too fascinated with, but I think it's a good thing for the sake of my coaching and working with others. And what I've learned is that everyone's brains are actually on the same playing field unless you've literally suffered from physical brain damage. But if you're an averagely functioning human being, your brain is no different than the valedictorian of your high school class or the smartest smart ass who's probably annoyingly right all the time in your workplace. It just seems that way because they've been able to, you know, get good grades and apply their intelligence in the way that intelligence is measured in our society. You can actually learn what they know 
But if we believe that we can't, then we're not going to try. And it feels harder for you to learn and accomplish tasks that other people are just seemingly naturally good at. But it's because we programmed our brains to believe that we're not good at those things. And it's going to be harder for us to reprogram our brain because they're already programmed in a way. But the good news is our brains are this like plastic organ that can be reshaped and we can change things about our thought patterns and then the way that we feel and the actions that we take and the results that we ultimately get. Now, a lot of our beliefs of being bad with money have been in our brain due to some really bad programming. So in my research, other than finding out that all of our brains are capable, as long as you're, you know, averagely functioning human being, our brains are capable of the same thing across the board. Like everyone, if you line them up, we all have the capacity in our brain to be able to learn new things. It just feels harder for some than others. And why is that? You guys know that if you've been listening to the podcast for a long time, I'm always asking people about their money stories and what they learned about money growing up, the beliefs they have about money from childhood. And it's because I truly believe that the way that we were taught or maybe not taught about money, the way that we heard money being talked about in our household growing up really has an impact on how we act around money today. But some of us are able to actually catch that and reposition those thoughts and change things, whereas some of us aren't. And the reason I ask people to share these stories is because then I want to know, okay, how are you with money today? And for the most part, a lot of my guests on the show are in a position where they've caught these thoughts. They understand what's been going on and now they act with money differently if it comes from a bad place or they're able to leverage the things that they learned about money when they were younger if it did, if they did have a good experience with money. But for the most part, what we learn about money in childhood doesn't always affect us positively, even if it was positive during our childhood. And we have to learn how to identify those thoughts and identify those patterns from way, way back to then be able to reprogram. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about this is because, again, in my studies, I'm learning that the first six years of a person's life, our brain, it's in a fully hypnotic state. I mean, if you can think of anyone from six years and under, like literally all of my nieces and nephews, and by the way, I have seven with one on the way, they're all so easily manipulated. And that sounds like a terrible thing to say, but it's true. This is how you teach your child to behave. You start forming their behavior from the ages of zero to six. And you do that through punishment, through rewards and consequences. And it's really important to teach them these things. But in the same sense, you know, they're learning other things that we really need to learn between the ages of zero and six in order to be just a regular, averagely functioning adult as we grow older. You know, you learn how to walk, you learn how to talk, you learn how to breathe, you learn how to cry. And then if you cry, what do you get from that? And so your brain is super receptive to literally everything. You're basically being hypnotized from zero to six years old, which is kind of funny to think about, but you know, A lot of us don't really remember those times, but if you were told that you were silly or bad, then you might start believing that because your brain is literally just sectioning it all in. Remember, like kids, I can't tell you, and if you have kids, you know this, or if you have nieces and nephews, you know this, but they literally remember everything and they take what you say as the absolute truth. They don't have that developed sense of questioning yet. They're literally just being hypnotized by what you tell them. So one time I was visiting home, I told my niece that I would bring her a snack the next time I came. And literally like a month later, she goes, where's my snack? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you recall that. And I think she had programmed in her brain that me coming to see her equals snack. And then she gets that. And so she's programmed that neuron because I told her it once. So that's one example. And our brains are extremely receptive to anything that's going on during those years. Then from the ages of six to 12, our brains are in a semi-hypnotic state. 
So the majority of our beliefs and attitudes about ourselves are shaped during these years because we start to hear things and then we start to believe them. And so this, again, if your parents were talking about money or even acting around money or the question about money like think about when you were 10 and you wanted to go do something and you had to ask your parents for money what was their response was it money doesn't grow on trees or you know did you see a wealthy person and did they say oh they're just greedy like they have that because they xyz these are all things we're picking up and when you're 10 11 12 like you're really learning these and being able to develop your own thoughts around them but they're highly influenced by the people that are telling you these things as well when I was around the age of 12 I had a lot of kids poking fun at me because I grew up in a bigger home and that really caused me to have all of these doubts about wealth and being good with money was almost like something to hide and not talk about because then people will make fun of you or people will say things that don't cause a good feeling for you. So this is a point where you're still really shaping your beliefs about who you are and how you are. And they're not even directly, you know, your parents might not be telling you that you're bad with money, but you're starting to build beliefs around money in reflection of how your parents act with money or how your peers act around or about the topic of money or your aunts and uncles or teachers whoever you're really surrounding yourself with and having these conversations with or observing that's how you're really starting to develop this stuff so I wanted to bring this up because it's science science is telling us that a lot of this stuff and this can apply to literally anything but you know, my focus is money and our money stories and our money mindset and our beliefs around money. And if you've never really dove into what money was like for you growing up, the stories that you personally developed around money, maybe as a result of observing your parents or your peers or your siblings with money, that's going to create a pathway in your brain. And I'm not going to get into this deep science about neurons and pathways, but we can do that in a later date or you can join my upcoming masterclass, which more details again will be provided in a future podcast. But we develop these these pathways in our brains and these beliefs. And then if we don't reshape these beliefs, we're always going to believe them. And our beliefs are just thoughts that we keep on thinking. And we know that our thoughts impact the way that we feel and our feelings. We're always taking action based on how we're feeling in this moment. So if we truly feel like we're operating out of scarcity because we're, we believe and we have a thought that we're bad with money or that money is for the greedy or that you don't want to be too frivolous because of something, then you're going to act out of that feeling that that thought causes. And your actions lead to your results. And so if you're in a result, if you're in a situation where you're not really happy with what's going on, Maybe you're in a situation that is showing you proof that your thought is true of being bad with money because maybe you've gotten yourself into some credit card debt or you're just not able to save. You're just, you're making good money, but you have nothing to show for it. Then that we can dig deep. We can basically reverse engineer and figure out where is this coming from and how can we change the brain? And the good news is your brain is plastic. It is a simple structure to change. It's not easy. Again, it takes work, but if you can figure out these triggers and then catch yourself when these trigger moments happen to reframe those thoughts and start thinking something from a neutral standpoint or a positive standpoint that will allow you to feel differently about these thoughts about money, then you can act differently and you can get different results. So more on this in the coming weeks, but I just wanted to share this because it hits close to home for me. And I think a lot of you, I know a lot of you are interested in mindset and money mindset, but maybe have a hard time grasping it because you are kind of from the practical minded side of things as I often tend to be. And I've known there's a link between a lot of the 
ways that we think and the mindset and the affirmations and visualizations and manifestations, all of that talk, there's a scientific link between that and what is actually happening. And I want to start kind of drawing that closer together to show you that no matter what side of the, you know, woo woo or the practical mind you come from, this stuff matters. And we need to start thinking about it and believing that we really can change the way that we think. And brain science tells us that we can change habits. You know, if you read The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg, I believe is his last name, how you say it. But if you read The Power of Habit, you'll learn how the brain is structured and how we really can change our habits, whether that's a spending habit or a overeating habit or something else that you really do want to change. Maybe you pick your nose. I don't know. But if you want to change it, you know, you're doing things subconsciously and you can change these subconscious habits, but we have to do the work. And it's possible, but again, it's not going to be easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. I hope that it opens your mind, opens your brain to some new thoughts and ideas and we can talk about it more in the wealthy wanders so if you want to join the community go to wanderwealthy.com slash fb and then click the link to get into the facebook group or get on the email list or both you can absolutely do both and if you want to work with me more intimately on your finances on providing you the systematic practical aspect, but also the mindset aspect of changing the money system and the way that you are with money from the ground up, rebuilding, making a plan, giving your money a purpose and helping you be confident and clear and make those big money moves that you've been wanting to make. Then you can sign up for a free discovery call and apply for coaching by going to wanderwealthy.com slash apply. I'm so excited to work with you I want to get to know you. I want to help you in any way that I can. And if we can do that through coaching, I would so love that. All right, guys, I mentioned a couple of different things in this episode, so I will link everything up in the show notes. You can get to the show notes by going to wanderwealthypodcast.com slash podcast slash episode 98. And I will talk to you next week where we're going to be talking about mindset, meditation, and just being more mindful about spending and any other thing in your life with a person that comes from a yoga background. So that's going to be fun. Until then, I hope you wander wealthy.